So as I said, we're going to talk about cash sweep. So I'm going to talk generally about the concept. Uh, thing is about cash sweep is excess cash. There's a concept of excess cash. Now, is, is it possible for someone to have excess cash? Well, I don't think so. Everybody, everybody. Okay, so Tola is saying it means take out an an excess cash from project and keep it in a suspense until further notice. Okay. Yeah, so that's kind of the idea. So let you have excess cash, but really what you want to do with the excess cash is cash is a raw material of any business, right? You shouldn't let cash sit down there doing nothing. Cash should work for you. And the way cash can work for you is cash can repay some very expensive debts that you're paying, that you're paying interest on. So if you have very expensive debt, most companies have various caters of debts. You have senior debt, junior debt, senior, senior, senior debt. You have overdraft. So you have all sorts of ways of financing your business. In fact, there are only two ways of financing your business, which is you have your finance your business with either equity or debt. But excess cash, where do you place it? You, you use it to pay down the most expensive debt you have. But in paying down the most expensive debt, there are certain covenants. Some debts are what we call senior debts. Now, that senior debt may not be the most expensive debt, but you you can't use that money to go and pay some other debts. You have to you have, first of all, you have to meet your obligations for senior debt, and then if you meet those obligations and you still have cash left, then you can use that cash to kind of pay down some other debt or pay down an overdraft or something like that. That's what you use excess cash for. And that's really what a cash sweep does. So you just kind of, your treasurer will decide on what you're going to sweep out of your financials, your for your funding or restructuring your finance, your funding, uh, whatever funding you have for your business by using the cheapest possible financial uh, mechanism, yeah, whether it's equity or debt. So, and then maybe what's left behind you, you can pay as dividends, who knows? So that's what cash sweeps do. And you hear something like cash flow waterfall. A cash flow waterfall just means, think about it. Think about a bucket, right? There's a bucket and you're pouring water out of that bucket. So when you pour water, let's say you have smaller buckets under. Uh, when you pour water from a big bucket into a small bucket, it's going to overflow. So once it overflows, let's assume it now overflows into a cup. And then that cup now overflows into a, another tiny, smaller cup. So that process of cash coming from that big bucket, pouring into a smaller bucket and that bucket overflowing and overflowing is a waterfall. So just I want you to think about a waterfall. That's what the cash flow waterfall is. So you pour excess cash into one debt, you finish with that debt, you pour it to the next debt, pour it to the next debt. Maybe the last debt doesn't get any cash. In that situation, you probably need an overdraft. You need to go borrow some temporary money to meet those obligations. So that's what it is. But in a model, you have to do it dynamically. You have to build it in a way that is very easy and your model automatically updates. So when there's excess cash, it goes to pay off debt. When there's no excess cash, you need to look for funding. And your model will check for funding. Maybe you need to get another loan if it's possible or get an overdraft. But if funding is not available and you have obligations, you have to get equity. You need to bring in some equity in there or else you go under. So that's uh, typically how cash sweeps work and, and then the uh, cash flow waterfall. So kind of the same concept. So Aziz says a cash sweep or debt sweep is the mandate, mandatory use of excess free cash flow to pay down outstanding debt rather than rather than distribute it to shareholders. But it's not really mandatory in the sense that you can decide what you want to do. So management may decide, no, we're not going to do it. But really, it's prudent. It is prudent to use cash to pay off expensive debt. Instead of cash sitting there in your current account and you're still rolling debt, you should use it to pay off debt, right? Now, if you can use the cash to do a better, higher paying return, why not? You should use it in your business. If your business, the return on investing in your own business is like 50%. And your debt is 20%. Please don't pay off the debt. Just keep on investing in your business. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're settling debt ahead of the scheduled time. Thank you, Aminat. Very true. So if you're settling debt ahead of the scheduled time, you're using a cash sweep. But there could be covenants. 
the cash sweep could come with covenant. So the bank could say, you are not allowed to pay off this debt until after three years. If you paid early, you're going to have a penalty. So that penalty, you need to kind of add that rate into your interest rate and use that to compare or calculate and say, okay, should we still pay it off or not pay it off? Is this penalty too much? So that's the typical things you look at when you're talking about a cash sweep. So look at this example. For ex We have a cash sweep when the excess cash is less than the total debt. So look at our excess cash. We have uh, 250, let's say 250 million excess cash. And look at our debt. We have 100, one debt A is 100, debt 2 is 80, debt 3 is 100. So total debt we have is what? 280. So it doesn't make sense for your cash to be sitting there in your assets while your debt is 280 and paying interest. So a good idea would be to sweep it, right? To just clean it out. So by sweeping it, what we've done is we've moved from a, a cash of 250, has been wiped out, and our debt too has been wiped out up to only 30 or 30 million debt left. Yeah, So we've wiped out most of our debt. So this is how cash sweeps work. But the issue is you, how are you going to wipe it out? To me, when you're wiping it out in your model, of course you want to wipe out maybe senior debt first, junior debt, but I think wipe out the most expensive debt first. So you need to have a dynamic model in a way that you can automatically wipe things out. You decide what you want to wipe out. Am I wiping out debt A first or debt B first or debt C first or debt E first? So that's how it's going to work. But I would like us to let's discuss around the concept so you understand the general concept of a cash uh, sweep. So we've swept um, cash being 250 million in cash, excess cash, we use it to sweep 250 million in debt. So we're left with 30 because our debt was 280. So what about if your cash is not up to, or let's say it's in excess of your sweep. So you have 300 million in cash, obviously, and you have debt of 280 million. Well, it's simple maths. You just wipe out that cash and then you have 30, 20 million in, in cash left. So you used you use the 200 and uh, 80 million, you had 300 million in excess cash, so you'll have uh, 20 million cash left. So that's that's just it. So so that's that's how you sweep. Financial Modeling Institute. And for those just joining us, uh, as I said, I'm going to I talk a little bit about cash sweeps. I'll talk again about cash sweeps, but the actual mechanics of a cash sweep or cash flow waterfall, I'll record it in our studio and I'll send you guys the link. So here I'm saying about the competition, the financial modeling um, competition that we're going to do. And we're going to announce the winners next webinar, which is next next third Thursday of the month. What date is that? Third Thursday of next month is what? Let's see. Third Thursday of next month is 16th. So we'll announce the winner on the 16th of next month. And um, yeah, and to be able to participate, you need to join the meetup group. Financial Modeling Meetup Group. So, so Financial Modeling Institute is a new body and um, they are kind of like mimicking CFA, right? So um, CFA is Chartered Financial Analyst and the people that use financial modeling are financial analysts and accountants, accountants and financial analysts. Those are the real two people that use financial modeling. And I can tell you for a fact that the syllabus for CFA Chartered Financial Analyst syllabus, really doesn't have much on modeling or even practical modeling. Yes? So even ACCA, Chartered Accountant, the only certification that I know has a little bit more modeling in it is CIMA. So CIMA is Chartered Institute of Management Accounting. But I can tell you for free, modeling skills is one of the most needed skills in finance. If you're a very good modeler, you will absolutely never, ever, ever be unemployed. And one nice thing that someone told me is you can do what we call, you can get some private jobs that could probably pay, pay a big chunk of your, of your rent for you. So you could get private jobs. You do, someone's doing a, a business plan. You just do the model for them and charge some really good money. So getting that skill is extremely valuable, especially if you like numbers. And what I like about this institute is they have broken it down. It's very practical. So level one, for example, if I click on level one up here, level one is called advanced uh, financial modeler. And what it needs is accounting skills, 
uh, finance skills and Microsoft Excel skills. Those are the three main skills it needs, accounting, finance, and Excel. You don't need investment or valuation skills. So you just need accounting, finance, and Excel, and you're going to build a model from scratch, from beginning to end. You're building a detailed model, uh, financial model for a company for five years. So you need to know how to build a model. That's your exam. That's your level one exam, four hours. So once you go to this website, go to level one, you should be able to see resources somewhere down here. Self-study, see body of knowledge, skill checklist, exam, sample exam, study guide, approved training providers, training courses. So you'll be able to check that. I think training courses, you should see our course there. So our course is, um, let me see. E. Brown Consulting. So here we are here. Advanced Financial Modeler course, 10th to 14th of September. But this is the one you will get free. You get this free of charge if you uh, win the price, right? So that's us. So we are one of the training providers for the Financial Modeling Institute. So that's level one. Level one, anyone that does level one, you should be pretty comfortable in your work with level one. But level two, level two goes a little deeper. So level two goes a little deeper, and you will need to have accounting skills, finance skills, investment skills, valuation skills, and Microsoft Excel skills. You need to be an expert in Excel and then maybe advance in everything else. So that's level two. So level two's uh, body of knowledge is, I'll just show you what that is. So the body of knowledge for level two, this is uh, it here. You need to... Uh, well, for level two exams, revenue, you need to really break the revenue down far more detailed than you did in level one. Operating cost, create a detailed cost structure with all sorts of um, caveats. Um, you need to do your depreciation calculations. Your calculations are just a bit like level one, but far more advanced, far more advanced and dynamic. So you need to build a lot of dynamism into your calculations, right? So, so that's your level one. You can download this full thing uh, later on your own. Uh, okay, let me even download this now. I could just say download. Oh boy, uh, let's see four or nine people. Yes, yes. <laughs> anyway, okay. So let's see that. So that's download. Excellent. <laughs> so now that's level two. For me, level two is for people that are really deep into finance and want to do some valuations, want to understand appraisal of businesses and stuff. You want to be more advanced when you're doing level two. Level three, I think, is only for consultants. I don't think people that work in industry should do level three. Level three is master financial modeler. If people like myself and stuff that should be doing level three because it's it's a bit deeper, 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 and it's um, it's mostly for consultants because as someone working in an, in the industry, you would probably not need all those skills. You wouldn't really use them. You use them if you're the type that builds models every month or something, and there are different kinds of models you need to build. So that's for level three. So level three, the exams haven't started yet. It's a new certification. So level one that has started, level two is starting, I think October. That's this October coming, level two exams are starting. So please go ahead and try and register for this. So let me get back to our slides. It's very, very useful. It's something that uh, you would really, really gain from. Okay, so the website, let me just add the website to your link right now so you can see it. Yeah. So, um, just just make sure you join our meetup group so that you can participate in the um you can participate in the draw right so and then again let me show you what else you can do for those interested as well please go and get some free training here we have some free training in the pre-walk let me give you some good tips you can get a free training so this is the course you're going to do to become your advanced financial modeler you're going to do this detailed course, and we have the online version of this course coming out soon. But well, this is a pre. When you do the, when you win the prize, you're going to get this whole online course plus five days of classroom plus a mock exam plus the exam itself. So you can see free, free, free. So there's some free videos here. So I think let me send you guys a link. You don't need to pay a whole what two thousand dollars. You can get some for free. Let me give you. A link. I'm giving you a link to this online pre-course. So go and do at least the free ones. Go and watch the free videos so you could learn a few things for free. Yeah, go learn the mastering lookup functions, 
uh, building capex time value of money calculations and stuff like that integrity checking and the likes for financial modeling all right so the cash sweep when the excess cash is more than the total debt so debt for cash sweep repayment and you have your returned earnings so if i go next let's say uh, returned earnings cash sweep when the excess cash is more than the total debt oh well well the excess cash kind of goes into paying dividends so your dividends uh, your shareholders get more dividend there's a school of thought right that cash is not owned by the business cash is owned by the shareholders because if you think about cash cash to me how you use cash and excess cash is a strategic decision and those strategic decisions at the end of the day if you have excess cash and you don't know what to do with it you really need to give it back to your shareholders your shareholders will find it, find what to do with that money so i i think it's a little bit irresponsible for companies to just have cash sitting down doing nothing you're either using it to reduce cost by reducing interest interest payments or if you can't do anything with it give it back to your shareholders so for Apple, for example, Apple has bucket loads of money sitting there as cash. And some people think, well, if you're just having cash sitting there, I mean, yes, you are making a lot of profit. And if you're not going to convert that cash into maybe growing, maybe you've already outgrown yourself, then give us back the cash. But it's like a cushion. So I think and they can invest in other businesses. Okay, um, so Aminat asked some questions. I don't know, question, what was the question? How would how would we pay in for an external benefit? What? How would, uh, so Justin, I don't understand your question. You said, how would me paying for an exam benefit me? Oh, how would me paying for an exam benefit me? Oh, so, so Justin, the problem, like I'm an employer, right? The problem we have as employers is this. We have a role and the role requires financial modeling skills. And then somebody sends a CV and says, I have modeling skills. And we do the interview and we're like, oh, you have modeling skills. If the interviewer has time, they will give you a modeling test. And of course, you fail the test. So you fail the test and they've just wasted their time. Now, to confirm that you have modeling skills, if you have a certificate, which is like the AFM certificate level one that says you are an advanced financial modeler, I don't need to ask you or confirm whether you have modeling skills. You absolutely have modeling skills because the certificate is valid the certificate is a confirmation of your skills so that's really why we go to school that's why we do uh, university and stuff is a confirmation of your skills okay so it's a confirmation of your skills yeah so i i think that advanced financial model level one is a confirmation of your skills it will give you traction and it's something that we will build up later people will start knowing about it because when it comes for deals and in an organization, any strategic position in an organization requires a very good modeler. So let me see another question from Tolia. Hi, David. Employed. Uh, uh, hi, David. Employed for life. Happy to hear this. Yeah. However, my fear is that a software could be created to do all these things a few years and modelers could seem redundant. What's your take on this? Excellent. Thank you for that question. So yes, a software could be created that could do all that. And I can tell you right now, um, yes, disruption is going to happen. There are going to be tools and stuff that will automate the modeling process. But the thing about software is you should think about it as an add-on. You should learn that software. You should learn that software and enhance how you currently build your models. It's just going to mean that your models are going to be far more how not complex they may do the 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 basic stuff but then you will probably understand the predictive analytic power of machine learning for example and you're modeling that and you're bringing that predictive power of machine learning into your own financial modeling so let's assume all the regression and stuff and you bring that in because the hard work of calculations is being done by the the software but that that high level thinking uh, that that you your brain has more than any software currently you do that higher level thinking and bring all sorts of scenarios to bear and explain those projections to your boss or to your bosses so you be a financial modeler predictive analytic expert using those same models but at a higher skill set so maybe whatever it is you're currently doing yes it to be automated but it just means there's going to be more complex work to do and you need to go learn that 
go and learn, especially interpretation. How do you visualize what it is you've projected? So you need to just learn more. I don't think it will completely replace it. It will replace some things, but you just need to keep on being ahead, 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 which is why you need to read and read and read more and continue practicing more. Yes, things are going to be disrupted, no doubt, but uh, just be ahead of that curve. So that's Toliat. Okay, I have more questions. The exam doesn't give you materials for texts to help you study. Oh yeah, the exam doesn't give you stuff to help you study. Uh, you need to have you need to go to one of their providers and learn. So you need to go to one of their providers and learn. So like us for example, you need to go and learn. But then you can buy books. So check out the books section. There are some recommended books. So let me go to modeling books. So if you don't want to go to any provider, just go and read books. Some people can learn with books. So if you look at the link, guys, I have the link for you uh, mm -hmm. for the books. If you click on that link, they have the recommended books they have. Let me see. Uh, let me just share the screen with you again so you can see that. Thanks for that question. That makes sense. Uh, share. So, uh, so you have financial modeling books. I think we have all these books. But the thing about books is... Yeah, the, each of these books probably like 400 pages. Which one would you read, right? There's so much knowledge out there. And if you can get someone to curate or to reduce that into a course and then guide you in what is required, that's fine. Some people are very good at reading on their own. Some are not. Like people here, how many of you can take a book, read on your own, and go pass an exam? How many of us have that ability here? I, I think I do. I kind of like that. So me, I'll say yes. I can read, I can just get the book, sit down, read everything, and then go right to the exam. I, I, I won't say I always pass, but <laughs> but that's that's what's good for me. So some people are, are readers, some are writers, some, some it depends. It really depends. Yeah. So Justin says, what kind of company will require FMI skills? So what kind of company will require financial modeling skills? I can say company, well, it's not more like company. Every company needs to look at the future. Every company needs to plan. So most of the time you hear them say, hey, budgeting, we're budgeting. What is budgeting? A budget is a model. A budget is a forecast. Most likely a forecast for most people do three-year rolling budgets. So that forecast is financial modeling. And what you end up seeing, let me tell you the scenario I see in most companies worldwide. They're doing a budget then everybody has this budget meeting. The head and everybody are there sitting at this budget meeting. They agree some kind of assumptions. And then some analyst now goes and builds a, a model or a budget. They come for that meeting again, and then they say, oh, no, what about this? What about that? What about it? The meeting is filled with what about, what about, what about? Then they now close the meeting. They come for another meeting. They check the next assumption. They come for like five meetings. If you have a very good modeler, it's just one meeting you require, one meeting. All the what if, what if, what if will be done in the meeting. You change this assumption, change that assumption, change this assumption, and they see the effect right there. So it's, it's someone that really has those modeling skills that will be able to do that. Unfortunately, people have Excel skills, not really modeling skills. You need accounting skills, finance skills, Excel skills, investment skills, valuation skills, all these skill sets into one, and then you now have Excel where you build a model with all these skills. It's very difficult to have one person with all the skills, which is why it's very difficult to find very good financial modelers. So every company needs it, especially on the strategic side. So the strategy, senior management, heads of the company, that's where the skill set is needed. So you'll be in board meetings, you'll be answering questions about your data because you are the modeler. And when they come to make certain very critical decisions, they want to invest in a new pipeline, they want to invest in a new venture, they want to stop a business or, or restart a business, you are the one that would advise with all the numbers coming from accounts. Accounts gives you all those numbers. So yeah, it's what kind of company will require FMI skills? Every company in the strategic level, higher level uh, companies. So let me see. Um, which other question? So this has turned to a Q&A session, guys. I hope you don't mind. Um, the exam doesn't give you materials for text to help your study. It does, actually. It gives, oh, well, the text, okay, that's what I answered with this book. So these are the books that they recommend. So you could go to Amazon.com to buy them. Um, let me see, which one would I recommend here? If you don't know accounting, get this book. 
this is the only one you need. You don't need any other accounting book. This one is a huge book. In fact, if I had my uh, camera on, I should. <laughs> Let me just check the book. I'm just going to go look at it. I have it in my shelf right now. See how many pages it is. It's huge. Okay. All right. I, I have that book in my hand right now. I have not opened it one bit to read because I, I'm, I'm supposed to be a fellow of the Institute. So I think I know accounting pretty well. But it has, geez. A thousand, it has a thousand three hundred pages. So, uh, it's very, very heavy. <laughs> it has one thousand three hundred pages. So yeah, this is all, the only accounting book you will need. Uh, for modeling books, uh, which one would I recommend? I think this book by um, um, uh, Danielle. She's in, based in uh, Australia, I think. She, it's really, really good. That is using Excel for business analysis. And then I also recommend this one, Building Financial Models to the Top Left. So this book and this book, yeah. Uh, I think that's it. For the rest, you can get it online, really. So that's that's that. Any other questions, guys? Anyone? Just type out any questions. Okay. Okay. Okay, so what kind of company would... Okay, that's it. All right, so guys, you finished asking questions. That's excellent. Um, as I said, if you don't have any more questions, I will need to... Let me see. Um, budgeting, accounts. So cash sweeps. Unfortunately, I can't open Excel. So as I said about cash sweeps, we we can just finish the slides of the cash sweeps and i'm going to record this content i promise to record the contents and send you guys a link so you would see something very cool on um on what's it called on um, our youtube channel yes so the effects of cash sweep so the effects of cash sweep means you save a lot of money by using money to save money you're paying off very expensive debt and uh, you save money by interest rates or reduced interest uh, payments so that's why you use cash sweeps. Okay, so you reduce interest payments, cash sweep methods. There are various methods for cash sweeps. So when we do, when I show you the demo, the main thing you need to understand is the two most important functions for calculating cash sweeps, right? The two most important functions are max and min. So max function and your min function. And then for those that know modeling, it, you need to learn, how will I call it, masks. Something called masks, and then there's something called flags. So masks and flags. So a mask in, in Excel, when you say true, when you, you say, hey, has this condition been met? And you do a formula that results to a true. True in Excel is one, and false in Excel is zero. So you do all those conditions, true, false, true, false, and that's how you calculate it. Okay, so the, the books take you through the basics of accounting for excel modeling no the books don't do anything about excel they just take you through accounting in general and um, if you guys are patient in a couple of months we're going to have an accounting course that breaks down accounting in a completely different way and makes it so so easy for you to understand accounting for those that have attended our course you'll notice this statement we used to say that if money enters your pocket debit your pocket that's all you need to know about double entry accounting when money enters your pocket, you debit your pocket. Because accounting is important, but you don't need to be a chartered accountant to do become a very good financial modeler. You just need to understand the generals, general idea behind um, analyzing a financial statement, understanding financial statements. You don't need to go deep into double entry. You should understand that your P&L has revenue and expense. Your balance sheet has assets and liabilities. So, of course, Owner's equity is like a liability to the business. So that's all. Revenue and expense, assets and liability. Your revenue is a credit balance. Your liability is a credit balance. Your expense is a debit balance. Your assets is a debit balance. And what the accountants do with IFRS or International Financial Reporting Standards is decide whether something is an asset or an expense and decide whether something is revenue or a liability. That's typically it. And then for the liability side, that's where your funding comes from. Your funding comes from long-term and short-term liabilities, which is like debt, loan, equity, and uh, current liabilities. 
And your uses of funds are your assets. So your assets are your fixed assets and your current assets. As the accountants would call it, non-current assets. What I just still call it fixed assets. Yeah, fixed assets and current assets is your uses of funds. You use cash to buy uh, assets, right? And where does the cash come from? Where does funding come from? From debts, equity, and short-term liabilities like payables, accounts payable. If someone, or if you owe someone money and you don't pay him, it's like the person has given you a loan. So that's all about the accounting you need. Then you need some more advanced accounting like, okay, deferred tax. How do we handle deferred tax? How do we handle minority interest? Those smaller, intricate things that you will need to know the calculations of and how you enter them into your model. So accounting is key, but you don't need to know everything. Just what you need. Just a little of what you need. So, yeah. So your cash sweep methods, just a method. So that's the demo, FMI, advanced modeler exams. Okay, October is the exams. Okay, and then they were talking about that. So did you get the name of the second book? Mm, didn't get the name of the second book. Okay, the books I was recommending were, okay, let me go back to this uh, share screen. Okay, in fact, I would actually recommend this accounting fundamentals by Mary Moore, uh, Accounting Fundamentals. Then I would recommend um, using Excel for Business Analysis, a guide to financial modeling fundamentals. I would, I would recommend this. Then uh, that's using Excel for Business Analysis. Then I would recommend this. Well, if you know accounting, right, don't waste your money. If you don't know accounting, yes, buy this big book. If you know accounting, please just go and <laughs> go and do some small revision. You don't need to buy an accounting book if you know accounting, right? If you don't know accounting, definitely you need, I think, this one to the right. It's quite a huge book. So I recommend this big book called Financial and Managerial Accounting. And then I'll recommend using Excel for business analysis I will also recommend Building Financial Models, second edition, this one. Well, there's a third edition now, actually. Building Financial Models. Then I will recommend this Accounting Fundamentals. It's a small book on Accounting Fundamentals by Mary Moore. So those are the books I will recommend. But I will also recommend that you attend a course. So if you can attend our own course on modeling, we'll teach you how to model from scratch, from a blank spreadsheet for a detailed model up to your detailed uh, P&L balance sheet, cash flow projections, even a small valuation as well. So you'd learn thorough, thorough modeling. But guess what, guys? Go on to this platform and learn. If you go to the Advanced Financial Modeler and go learn, uh, go watch some of the free videos. This is the pre-work. So this is not even a course. This is the work course you would do before you come for the classroom for five days. And eventually this will become a full-fledged course for the full financial modeling level one. So... Take modeling seriously, especially you guys here that I think are accountants and financial analysts. I think it's an excellent uh, certification for you to take. It's an excellent skill for you to have, to become a modeler, to say, yes, you're yeah, a modeler. You'll be able to both do extremely well for your business, for your office, for your company, as well as personally building models for all sorts of deals. And there are so many people online that require models. You can, in the evenings, you can be building models and making money. Uh, it's no, there's no problem with making extra money. Right? <laughs> Can machine learning be compared to financial modeling? Not really. Machine learning is what's machine learning? Let me. Machine learning looks for patterns, okay? So, patterns in the sense that let's assume you have a list of transactions, daily, daily, daily sales for the last five years. So, those daily sales for the last five years, and then let's assume you also have data on people's, um, maybe you've combined that with data on how people. I don't interact on Facebook, maybe your ads on Facebook or something like that. So we just need two sets of data. And one set of data is explaining another set of data. So what machine learning does is when you hear big data, it's just taking lots of data from different places, in a, places and seeing if there are patterns within those data. Is there a pattern between if this thing goes up by 10%, does that thing go up by 5%? What's happening here? And it looks for patterns. And once it finds patterns, then it starts doing AI, starts doing artificial intelligence comes in where it starts advising as per, okay, if somebody tweets at around two o'clock in the morning, this person is 
unreliable because the correlation between you defaulting on your loan and tweeting at 2 a.m. in the morning is very high. So that could mean that this person, I don't know, if <laughs> it, it sounds funny, but some companies actually use that right now. They check your social media profile and they use machine learning to learn to see people with these kind of patterns of social media behavior uh, reliable or not reliable when it comes to paying off loans. So that's not really modeling. That's machine learning. That's yeah, using machines to learn patterns in behavior, patterns in actions. And then, yes, you can now model it. You could take part of that thing there and, and build a model out of it. But that is really a model, machine learning model. But financial model in the sense is where we're just projecting based on um, assumptions we've made. Sometimes you use Monte Carlo simulation. If you like that, you can go to our YouTube channel to check uh, what I mean by Monte Carlo simulation. So you're simulating, okay, these are the trends in revenue for the last, or sales for the last 10 years. And the trend shows that um, we have maybe a normal distribution, if you know what that means, a normal distribution. And we think that uh, sales or total transactions will be between 200 and 250. It's safe to assume that 80% of the time, our transactions will be between 200 and 250. And using that analysis or analytics, you can build your financial model because you now have a demand, a, a kind of a, a, an estimate of demand. Yeah. And you used regression analysis to do it, which is the same tools that machine learning uses. It uses regression and all of that to come up with predictions. Okay, what previous question did you have, Justin? Well, okay, you got a good question. This is my last question. How can I make money for myself with financial modeling if I don't want to work for a company? So how do you make money for yourself? Let me give you guys an excellent website. So if you want to make money for yourself, right? You go online to a website. First of all, have your skills. Be an excellent modeler. Then let me give you a website to make money. People that want to make money this is the last thing I'm going to tell you guys before I leave. Go to this website. You go and register on this website as a vendor. And all you tell you, the website is you are financial modeling expert. And then go look for jobs on financial modeling. When you go look for jobs on financial modeling, then you now apply for those jobs, which is not a, it's not a job that you work in. You just work online. So somebody in Pakistan that needs financial modeling. So you go there and say, yes, I can do this model for you. I'll finish it in two weeks. And it's going to cost you uh, $500. Yeah? So you do the model. You send it to him. He pays upwork.com. And then you now, uh, um, once he pays upwork.com, yeah, he's happy with the job. He, upwork, upwork pays you. And that's how you work. And that's how you can sit down in your house and make money from financial modeling. Use Upwork.com. Excellent tool. Not just for financial modeling, nearly any job you do, any skill you have, you can sell it on this website. Yeah. Right. So thanks for that question, Justin. I didn't see your previous question. I don't know what it was. What was your previous question? You said, what kind of company would require FM skills? I already answered that. I said that every company, especially the strategic unit or whatever strategy, whoever works on strategy, needs financial modeling, people with financial modeling skills. This is a, it's a huge skill set that's needed. And if you check their website, let me show you. They show you um, the companies that require it right up here. Yeah, see the companies? Companies in accounting, actuarial, asset management, budget and forecasting, credits. Those are where candidates come from. Candidates come from all these companies, yeah? So if you read this section, it will tell you exactly what kind of companies and what kind of roles requires financial modeling skills. These are all the roles, loads and loads and loads of roles. And I can tell you, not many modelers are out there. So yeah, an excellent company.